Emmanuel inside. Welcome back to Faith Talks, where we talk faith. And this is episode number two of the Discipleship 101 series. And today I'm going to be giving you five key tips for effective Bible study. And before I do that, thank you to all of my subscribers watching this video. If you haven't subscribed, then click that subscribe button for more videos that help you grow in your knowledge and your love for Jesus. Reading the Bible is one of those things that, as a Christian, you know is important, but it can be really hard to do. Sometimes you'll read it for a long time and you'll just think, I haven't really got anything out of this text. But effective Bible study is key. It's crucial to being able to grow in your maturity as a believer and to grow in knowledge of who God is and how we should live in response to him. I've been walking with the Lord for five years and in that time, I've seen my ability to study the Bible grow. And as a result, I've been able to grow. So I'm going to be sharing with you five tips, five key tips that I've learned to effectively study the Bible. Oh, and one thing before I start, this is by far the most important thing you can consider when you're reading the Bible. Look at the Bible as a window, not a portrait. Now, what I mean by that is a portrait is something you look at, but a window is something that you look through to see something else. The Bible is not for us to look at, but it's for us to look through to see the person of Jesus. So consider effective Bible study as a treasure hunt to see the glory of Jesus and consider these tips as tools to help you dig. Tip number one, prepare yourself. Some of the things that can make Bible study really difficult are distractions, shortage of time, not having the right equipment. So if you prepare, you can clear your mind and clear your space so there are limited distractions and you can get your Bible study done as effectively as possible. So how do I prepare for my Bible studies? I've got my Bible. I read from the English Standard Version Study Bible. I've got my notebook and my pen to take my notes. I've got my Samsung tablet so I can look at translations and commentaries online. I know this video has not been sponsored by Samsung. I wish, I wish. I've got a clear space, my door's closed, my phone is on do not disturb. So I've minimized the distractions and I'm ready for Bible study. So first things first, do what you have to do to clear your space and prepare yourself. Pray for wisdom. Ask God to open your heart and reveal to you what he wants you to know from his word. The Holy Spirit wrote the Bible, so there's no better person to ask, to teach you and to reveal things to you than the Holy Spirit himself. So just to paint a picture, I've got an iPhone. Now, if I wanted to understand better how my iPhone works, the best person or the best people to go to are Apple directly because they made the phone so they'll know how it's best used. In the same way, God is the author of the Bible and he will humbly and graciously give us wisdom to understand it if we ask him. So when you're about to start your Bible study, just pray a simple prayer. It doesn't have to be long. Something like, Lord, help me to understand the words that you've written here. Thank you, Lord, for revealing yourself to me and help me. Give me spiritual eyes to understand you, to know you and to love you as a result of what I'm about to study in your word. Amen. See, it's nice and simple. It's not too hard. But by doing that, you set yourself up for an effective Bible study. So now that we've got the preparation done, it's time to actually open up our Bibles and meet with God. Tip number three, observe the text. A big mistake that a lot of people make when they're reading the Bible or studying the Bible is that they're too quick to apply or too quick to ask, what should I do next? Before they've really taken time to see everything that's going on in the text and everything that the author is saying. It's kind of like if you're going out somewhere and you want to pick the best clothes for the event. You open your wardrobe and you just pick the first thing you see and you go. That, that makes no sense. If you spent a bit of time looking through the whole wardrobe and then picked out some stuff and put it together, you'd have a banging outfit. Reading the Bible is exactly the same. You have to spend time to see everything that's going on and examine it well to be able to piece it together and take it away. So remember that nothing that God has put in the Bible is wasteful, which means that it's worthwhile us paying attention to it and getting our heads around it. This is where basic English comprehensive skills will come into play. Like it's really good to just take, to just strip it back to basics and, and think about what's in front of you and examine it like, like you did in English language. Pay close attention to things like repetitions, emphasis on certain points, cause and effects, ifs and thens, questions and answers. You know the five W's and the H? Who, what, where, when, why, how? Those are really good questions to ask when you're observing. And when you're doing that, you can just highlight things as you go along. 
underline them, get a highlighter out, mark them down. I know some people are iffy about writing in your Bibles and stuff, but if it's going to make you read the Bible well, then I don't think God will mind. Just make sure you observe the text. Interpret the text. So now that we've observed everything and we have it all out on the table, the next thing to do to make sure it's really effective is to interpret everything we've discovered. If we spend time properly interpreting the text, then we can get into the mind of the original writer and the original reader, and hence God himself. The best way to interpret the text is to just ask loads of questions. There's no limit to the kind of questions you can ask. Why did he say that? Why did he say that to them? Like, what's the implication of that? What if he didn't say that? Why does he use that word? What does that word mean? Like I said before, there's no limit to the kind of questions you can ask. But a very, very, very key question that you can ask at this time, going back to what was said before, is how does this text point to Jesus? What is there about Jesus that is symbolized here? Or what is there a prophecy here about him? Or is there something that the New Testament quotes relating to Jesus? Like what is this telling me about Jesus? Be as creative as possible because that way we'll make sure, or you'll make sure that there's no stone left unturned. Now apply the text. So I hope you can see how big of a problem we'd have if we skip the first two stages and came straight to the application. We wouldn't be able to discern whether the application we've taken away is really what the intention is. But now because of the first steps that we took, we can make sure that the application that we take away from the text leaves us changed and transformed the way that God intends for us to be. What's the challenge here? How does this compare to how I'm currently living? How does this differ from what society thinks? How is this different from the world? What needs to happen for me to live like this? What change needs to happen in my mind? Or what do I need to believe or stop believing? Or what do I need to let go of or take hold of? These questions are a golden ticket to making sure that we're not just hearers of the word, but we're also doers of the word. So these are my five tips for an effective Bible study. Preparation, prayer, observation, interpretation, and application. Let me know in the comments if you found this helpful. And also let me know if you'd like to see an example of using this skeleton over a Bible passage. I've been thinking about doing YouTube live Bible studies as well. So if that's something that would interest you, then give this video a thumbs up and drop a comment down below in the comment section. We've got some more Discipleship 101 videos coming. And next week, we're going to be looking at three things that you didn't know were in the Bible. So stay tuned for that. I will see you here next week. And until then, peace and blessings, my you.